Hey everyone, so once you have those cute gnome triangles on, then it's time to work on our borders. Hi everyone, Kristen Som here, and we are gonna continue with our March Table Topper Cuties. So we have our gnome triangles on, and so that means it's time to work on our outer borders. And to do our outer borders, we also do the corner blocks. So just a warning, the grandkids are gone for a little bit, so it's a little bit quieter, but if you hear a whining dog in the background, that is my grand dog, and he's a lot, he, he's very, very old and can't see and can't hear, and um, whines hugely whenever my daughter's not around so so just excuse the sound in the background but um, he's he's a cute little beagle so we are going to work on the outer borders the bitty blocks and I'm also going to add in the backing and the binding on this video or at least that's my current plan since it's hard to film um, while I'm visiting my granddaughter um, and her family. I'm going to try and lump it all into one um, tutorial if the tutorial will hold out <clears throat> with so many parts to it. So that's my plan. So isn't it so cute? Are you loving your gnome table topper? Oh my gosh, my um, littlest grandson was watching me work on the last uh, corner block today and it was so cute. He's like, oh my gosh, is that the gnome hat? <laughs> so very fun. Excuse the dog, hopefully you can't hear that. He's quite a whiner. All right, so let's quickly go over what we need so I can get back to the dog. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna start with the corner blocks, which is we will do the bitty blocks. So the corner blocks are on page 41 and we just have this little bit in there, not much to it. So just like the borders, I suggest cutting the corner blocks a little bit larger. And like I've said in other videos, it's just so that when you're working on the quilting, it will tack down. Otherwise, you have to tape it in place, and that's not a problem. It will work fine. If you cut to the directions in the book, just tape in place. It's not a problem. But if you cut just a half inch larger, then it will tack down, and then we can trim after we're all done. And I find that to be easier. So on the corner blocks we are going to use the green doodle fabric it's that apple green and I did back all of mine with fusible stabilizer you want four of these and I'm doing mine at three by three all right that's what I did in the directions it says two and a half by two and a half and that will work fine too so four pieces um, and like I said my suggestion is three by three if you can if you haven't already cut so three by three four pieces and um, backed with feasible stabilizer we are going to quilt these so we are going to quilt them with a bitty block and it is the cute little clover it's a clover um, in each of our squares or each of the corners so to quilt that we're going to need our batting so our batting whether you cut the fabric to size or not whether you cut the fabric larger or not you're going to want your batting to be three by three so it will equal out basically <clears throat> three by three same size all right, but even if you cut this smaller, you still want your batting to be three by three so that you can tack it down and trim it. All right, so that is, the dog has his whole head in my suitcase. <laughs> oh, um, so we will do the bitty blocks first and then we will work on the outer borders. Sorry, I don't have my setup at my house. So I'm reaching around here. both let's go ahead and start with the um, the bitty blocks so we can see how cute those are so we are looking for bitty blocks right here in the block by block method and the February it is, says love bug oh so it's the wording love bug that is very cute so I'm gonna go ahead and double click on that and it will go to the center so on this we definitely don't need our 10 by 10 hoop we need a smaller hoop so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to see if it will fit. I think I'll do eight by eight. Could probably even do six by six. Let's try that. So a five by seven would work, I believe. Looks like. 
So if we have three, six, I think I'm going to do my eight by eight. I'm going to do eight by eight. Sorry about that. Um, so really it will fit in any of these, but since we have the overhang of the fabric, I'm just going to use my eight by eight to have a little bit more room. So you saw I went to the preferences folder. I'm now on my eight by eight hoop and I'm going to go ahead and click this H button again to zoom in and, um, so we're going to make uh, some minor changes to this like we usually do with the color so that some will join and some will not join. So let's go ahead and run through that really quickly. So this first one is the placement and the tack down first and second one for the um, batting. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the color and I'm going to choose the first color that comes up, which is dark aqua. And as I've mentioned in the past, the color doesn't matter. Um, you just want something that they will all be the same to join. And we don't want the default one blues and oranges to join here because um, that would defeat the purpose of having the batting stopping and the uh, main fabric stopping. So we're going to just change all of them so that we get to choose what joins together and what doesn't. All right, so that was dark aqua for the first one. The second one is the tack down of the batting. I'm going to click on the color and the first color that comes up is blaze and say OK. And then the third one is the placement for the main fabric. Click on the color. We already used dark aqua, so we're going to choose marine or the next color down for you. And then one four is the placement or I'm sorry, the tack down or the basting stitch of the main fabric. Click on the color and we already used blaze, so I'm going to choose Oriel. And then this default 17 turquoise, you don't need to change it because we're going to join all of those. But if you wanted to do a different color for each corner, then you would make sure to change the color for each one. But I'm just going to change it to sprout. And again, you actually don't need to change that. It's not going to group with anything else. So that one is all good. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and now I'm going to move this to the corner here. And you'll see we have a lot of extra room. So a six by six would work. It definitely would. I'm going to go ahead and change it just so I can see, get a visual of how close they would be. Um, you could do a five by seven. You would just do more of them lengthwise um, and one off to the side. Either Whatever size you want to do will work fine. Make sure it's not over the, um, the hoop size. So this yellow is the hoop corner. So you want to make sure that it's within that. All right, so I'm going to just bring it way over to the corner here. And that one's all done. So I'm going to go ahead and say, say control C like Kristen um, on my keyboard. And then control V like Victor or victory. All right, control V to paste it. Um, and then it goes right on top of the other one. So I'm going to go ahead and click on it and drag it over to the side here. All right, and then we need another two. So again, we're going to hit control V like victory, control V. I heard that someone was having a hard time understanding what letter um, that I'm telling you to paste. Uh, and so that's why I'm making a point of saying control V for victory. All right, so that's the third one. Another control V for victory for the fourth one. And we'll bring it over to this corner here. And you can see we have plenty of room plenty of room on this is my six by six hoop so whatever hoop size works for you this is a small little corner block so we don't need a lot of room all right so I'm going to go ahead and close these just so I can see them all all right and you could do that we don't need to do a line and distribute you're just using utilizing the entire hoop here you want them over to the four corners all right, and so I'm going to go ahead and do the utility color sort because right now, as you can see down in this right hand corner, we have 20 color steps. So we want to bring that down. And so I'm going to go to utility color sort and it thinks about it and then it reduces it by 15 color changes. So I'm going to click new view. It opens another tab. You can see that we have them all in one design now, whereas in this first tab, there's four different designs. So if anything didn't go right, you can always revert back to this first tab. All right, so in this second tab, real quick, look through it, make sure everything is as it should be, and this is all perfect. So that one is done. I'm going to go ahead and do a file, save stitch file as, and I'm going to save it in my quilting designs, which is on my desktop, Cuties Table Topper. 
And this is the bundle of quilting, cuties, embroidery files, pez, bitty blocks, block by block. Oops, there we go, and say open. And then I'm going to say um, love bug, love bug times four. Okay, love bug times four, save. And then I'm gonna quickly turn on my machine. I'll be right back. All right, and then if your machine is turned on, you can go to, and you and if your machine is a Wi-Fi ready machine, you can hit utility, send to Solaris XP1, and say okay. And then you'll get a little pop-up that says file sent to machine. All right, so that one is done. So then for the outer border, same thing, it's on page 41, and we're going to use that green stripe fabric. This is that one that I told you in the fabric prep video, our very first video for the March tutorial, um, that this is the one that is a um, directional fabric. So you want to cut it, as I mentioned in the, in the prep video, you just put your fabric out long, right? Long and tall. I don't know how to describe it exactly, but there's a picture in on page 11 of our booklet, and that helps to show you um, the way to lay it, and it shows that the stripes are going horizontally. So that's the way you lay out your fabric to be able to get those stripes on the long way all right so they are going horizontal the stripes are horizontal and this is your project you can have them however you want them but if you're following the the book and the guide then we want horizontal stripes so we're going to have four pieces and as always i recommend these to be a little bit larger than what is in the book so in the book it has uh, let's see four of them at two and a half by 18 two and a half by 18 for this directional fabric But I cut mine to two and a half by 20 just to give myself a little bit of wiggle room just like I described on the um, inner border video I like to have it a little bit larger and then you just cut it down at assembly. I think that that's easier. So two and a half by 20 is my recommendation. I would back these with fusible stabilizer if I were you. It makes it so that you don't get puckering and it won't change the size as much either. So that's what I do. All right. Now on our batting, we want our batting to be the exact size, whereas we cut the fabric a little bit larger, we want the batting to be um, the exact size. I'm smiling because this dog, <laughs> he's funny. All right, so for the batting on the outer borders, where's my little notes? Oh, and he's moving my whole camera. <laughs> dog, back up baby babe. Oh my goodness. Ooh, crazy crazy hi all right so 
Outer border batting. There we go. Sorry about that. Um, it is four pieces at two by 17 and a half. Two by 17 and a half. And since I do it where I add it on with the glue stick, like I showed on the inner borders, that's why you want this to be the exact size. We're going to skip that step one and two where we would trim in the hoop. We're not going to do that. So we want these to be the exact size and that will make it so that we don't have batting in our seams. Two by 17 and a half for all four of your um, battings. So since we're doing those corner blocks, that's why they're all the same size, if, if you wondered about that. All right, so that's for our outer borders. Hey everyone, I am at my computer now and ready to show you how to merge those outer borders. It is lunchtime, perfect time to work at the computer. So I'm going to open up in Brilliance Essentials and I'm on my 4x4 hoop right now so I'm going to go ahead and change that. You can always see your hoop size right down here at the bottom. And I'm going to go ahead and change it. I'm going to do those 10 inch designs. So I probably need, let's see, two, four, six, eight, ten. Hmm. Let's see if it'll fit in a ten in ten by ten. I doubt it will. I'm thinking I might need larger. But let's just see. All right, so I go, went to this preferences folder and clicked on the hoop size. And then I'm going to go here to this compass and click on H so that it zooms in just to the hoop. All right, and right here down at the bottom, you can see I'm on my ten and a half by ten and a half hoop. All right, so we're going to start by bringing in the first design. I go to this merge stitch file. And okay, so um, my designs, I have them on my desktop. I'm going to go to, let's see, Kristen's desktop. And let's see, Cutie's Tabletop or two with My Girlfriend's Quilt Shop. And there are the quilting designs right there. Click that plus sign to open it up and the plus sign to show the embroidery files. I use Pez for my machine and we are looking for, let's see, now we can go to work on the outer border. So file, new page, that opens the third tab. And then I am going to change this to my 10 by 10 hoop just to see if it will fit. So right there, 10 by 10 hoop. I went to this preferences folder to do that. And you can see that I'm zoomed way in. Like if I moved my mouse button, I can see better. So you can do it that way. Or when I say mouse button, it's the scroll on your mouse. Um, you can do that or you can go up here or you can use this button as well. Whatever works for you. Lots of ways to be able to zoom in. I'm going to just hit H. I like that. All right, so I'm going to go to Merge Stitch File, and I'm going to bring in the quilting design for the outer borders, which is squares two. So let's see. I'm going to close up the bitty blocks, and we are on. I'm going to sneeze. Sorry. Centers and triangles. No, we want borders, um, and it is the squares. So right here. All right. Oh, that's for, I was wondering why, why we already had them. That's for our inner borders. Okay, so we are, it's the same. We want squares. This was the chevron. We want the squares right there. So two, and I'm going to try the two by 10 right here. I don't think it'll fit in my 10 inch hoop, but I'm going to see what happens. So I'm going to double click on this. It'll go to the center and it does fit because it's nine and a half. That's right. So if you select it down here in the bottom, you can see it is two and a half by nine and a half. And so that does fit in my 10 inch hoop. So I'm going to do that. That works really well. You could use your, um, 9 by 14, let me think. So 2, 4, because it's 2 and a half. So you really need a 10 inch wide to be able to get 4 all together. So you could use your 10 by 16 hoop or your 10 by 10, or you can do 2 in one hooping and 2 in another hooping. If like you have your 8 by your 8 by 12 hoop, that would work really well. A 6 by 10 also, which should work. Yes, it would to do 2. All right, so that's in the center. Um, I am going to, so for you, I've mentioned this before, you can go ahead and click on step one and step two and click delete. 
Um, but I'm not going to do that just so that I remember to tell everyone in the tutorial to bypass those. But that would be the easiest way for you. Then you don't have to change any colors. I'm going to change one color very simply since there's only one that is the same. This default one blue is on here twice and one is for the placement of the batting and one is for the um, placement of the main fabric. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and change this first one because you'll be able to delete this one. I'm gonna just change the color very quickly. And the other colors, there's, there's no overlap, so this is fine. So that was super simple. This one is all ready. I'm gonna go ahead and click on this and move it over here, getting it all the way to the corner or to the side. Um, and then I'm going to do a Control C, um, like Kristen although there are Kristen's with a K, but mine is Kristen with a C. Kristen creates, you know this, creative. <laughs> okay, control C to copy. That's the word, C for copy. And then you would think it's control P, like Paul, to paste, and it's not. It is control V, like victory. So control V to paste it, and you can see it made another one. It goes right on top of the first one. So I'm gonna get, just click on it and move it out of the way. And I'm gonna make it wonky so that we can practice that um, align and distribute button again. All right, another control V, like victory, for the third one, and move it over here. And then control V for victory for the last one. And we'll move it all the way to the corner or the side, sorry, the side. All right, so then we have all four. I'm going to click on this just to be able to see them all easily. So there are our four designs. That is really cute. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and drag up from the bottom. Click from the bottom and drag up to be able to to select all four designs and you can see that they're all wonky here and I'm going to go to utility and align and distribute right there. All right and then I think it's this left center if I recall. I'm going to click on that and say apply. Yep that did it great. All right and then you can see that we have a little bit of space here and no space here. So I'm going to go ahead and click this distribute tab and then I've already got center and center selected. I'm going to say apply and you, you'll be able to see these move. All right, so this one moved over and I'm going to say close. All right, so this worked out really well. Now we have the same amount of space between them and they're all perfect. You want to make sure to do that before you do the color sort. If you do the color sort, then instead of the four different um, designs, you'll just have one design and it won't be able to distribute it that way. You have to do it before you do a color sort. All right, so we have the four designs. We're gonna go ahead and do a color sort because right now we have 20, <clears throat> 20 different steps. So utility color sort, and it reduced it by 15 color changes. I'm gonna click new view to check and make sure it did what I think it should do. And there's our placement for our batting, our tack down for our batting. And again, you can delete that first and second step. I'm leaving it in just to show people how to bypass it. Um, but you won't need it if you're adding the batting onto your borders the way that I'm going to show you. All right, and then the third one is the placement for the main fabric strips. And the fourth one is the tack down. Notice it just as the sides when it's the borders and then the quilting design on all four. So that's perfect. I'm going to say save, save stitch file as, and I'm going to save this. I'm in the bitty blocks right now, so I'm gonna go back to the embroidery files, and it was under border, chevron, and squares. And I'm gonna say the two by 10, and I'm gonna say quad so that I know that there's four of them and say save. And then I'm going to go to utility, send to Solaris XP1, okay, and file sent to machine. Done, how easy was that? Now we get to eat our lunch. Did you did you make a, a sandwich today? Doesn't that look so yummy? Ooh, um, Swiss cheese, lots of lettuce, um, Cheesecake Factory bread, yummy, yummy, and sunflower seeds, and pesto. Pesto and sunflower seeds, doesn't that sound so good? I'm hungry. All right, so um, let's get working on our outer borders.
we get our order outer borders on, then we were going to jump into the backing. So for the backing, um, I mentioned on the prep video that it says in the book on page 11 that we're supposed to have the yellow silky solid, the golden silky solid as our backing. And I didn't get that. I got a green swirl, which I like better personally. So um, whatever you have for your backing fabric, you want to have what size? 24 by 24 your backing is going to be 24 by 24 and I had someone asking just recently in the Christian creates group on Facebook if I stabilize this and if I um, add extra batting and I don't do either I think it lays just fine um, but you absolutely can this is your project and you absolutely can um, if you're finding that you're you add your backing on and there's it's messy, it's not laying flat. Um, I pin mine, I will show you that. Um, I don't have my special pins with me, but I will use what I can find here. Um, but anyway, I pin it and then I work um, starting from the inner out and it, I, it lays fine, I don't have any problems. But you absolutely can back your backing fabric with fusible stabilizer if you choose. You can add an extra layer of batting if you choose. Um, I haven't done any of the table toppers or even the quilts and mine has worked out fine. So you do you, whatever works for you, but you want your backing fabric to be 24 by 24 uh, for your backing. All right, and then after our backing, we will do our binding. binding is the golden silky solid all right and I already pre-cut mine I do not have these stabilized so I mentioned in the um, fabric prep video the very first video um, that you want to take out the binding portion and because we did have the silky solids for our inner borders and our binding so what I did is I cut the binding first and then I used the rest of my fabric and I stabilized that for the inner borders but for my binding I didn't stabilize it you could it's definitely not necessary. I actually did it once by mistake. I think it was last month or January. Um, I did do it one time and it makes it a little bit harder to get those mitered corners in my opinion. There's a little bit more bulk. I don't think it's necessary at all so I would not recommend it but if you do you, whatever works for you. So for your binding, we want two strips that are two and a half times the width of fabric. So that long fabric. <clears throat> two pieces at two and a half by width of fabric. This is all right, so like that big, big one, right? Width of, width of fabric, two pieces. And then there's also one piece. <clears throat> Here's another of the width of fabric, two pieces, two and a half by um, width of fabric. And then another one that is uh, two and a half by 20. And I had enough that I just went ahead and cut another width of fabric. So that was what I did, just made it easy. Um, but the official, you need at least two and a half by 20 on the third piece, on the third strip. All right, and we will use all of these for our binding strips, and then we will be done.
you get to about a half an inch from the end, then I backtrack, tie it off, and cut it. And then I pull it out from the machine. And all you're gonna do, hopefully you can see this, you're gonna fold it at a diagonal lining it up at this corner edge and keeping this so that it will be straight. So see, straight here and at that corner. And once you have it like that, then we're going to fold it down over itself, lining it up with this top edge here. Hold it in place and pivot. It will look like that. All right, and then we're going to just stitch from the bottom down, from the top down, and do it again when we get to the next corner. Lining up that raw edge of the binding with the raw edge of the quilting. That's how we make the mitered corner. We're starting on the back. I saw a couple of you are adding labels to your table runner. Great, awesome job. Um, I am not adding labels to mine. We've got other projects going on and I'm just not taking the time to do that. My initial concern was that it wouldn't lay flat on my table and I have stuff on my tabletop, my table topper, and so I didn't want it looking um, uneven or or acting uneven so I chose not to do a label but you absolutely can you know this I'm a big fan of labels because then your future generations are gonna go oh my great-grandma made this you know it's just kind of cool right so absolutely feel free to make a label if you choose I at this point am not going to or um, putting our red, white, and bloom quilt on hold and our swaddle sweeties on hold to be able to do this. And so I'm, and, and seeing my grandkids. So there's only so many hours in the day and I'm doing everything that we can. We all are. So you do you, if you want a label, absolutely go for it. There's nothing wrong with that at all. Um, you could even use like that, the gnome from the triangle. You could do that on a piece of felt with your name and date. Easy, right? 
So anyway, and my shirt today is not an embroidered shirt. Can you believe it? I have very few items in my closet that are not embroidered, but this one is not. Um, so anyway, tell me how you're doing with your goal though. We're finishing up this project. For me, the goal was going to be the same as red, white, and blue since we're working on those together. Um, so up to you, but I want to know how you're doing with your goal. I've been seeing in the comments here and on Facebook that people are sharing their goals and it's so inspiring and I'm absolutely loving seeing you guys working on your goals and, and, and always being at our best selves. I love that. So share in the comments. Tell me how you're doing notes oh and he's moving my whole camera <laughs> dog back up baby babe oh my goodness Ooh, crazy crazy hi mm -hmm.